Hey, everybody, and welcome to Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale, and this week is going to be one of the most exciting, one of the most fun, one of the most colorful ones you've ever experienced. Let me ask you a question or two before we dive into this. When people first watch the movie The Secret, where they learn about the law of attraction, where they read some of the self-help and self-improvement and positive thinking books out there, they start wondering, can I win the lottery? Can I win a sweepstakes? Can I win a house or a car or a truck? They start thinking in terms of possibilities, which is very good. But what's the answer? Can you actually win those things? And I'm here to tell you, you can. Not only that, I'm going to prove it to you with my guest today. Now, before I bring her on, I want to say a couple things. I mentioned the movie The Secret, and people often ask me, how did I get into the movie The Secret? I wrote a book called The Attractor Factor. The Attractor Factor has been a bestseller for about 20 years. And Rhonda Byrne, who produced the movie The Secret, read The Attractor Factor, called me up, told me about her movie, and invited me to be in it. Now, of course, I had no idea that the movie would transform history and transform my life, but it did, and it was because of this book. The Attractor Factor reveals five steps for creating wealth or anything else from the inside out. It's on Amazon. Also, I want to remind you that I have a coaching program. People ask, what's the fastest way to create change and get to living the zero limits living lifestyle? I say, get a coach. I started Miracles Coaching 20 years ago. It's proven. It's tested. There have been hundreds of thousands of people to go through it. It's trademarked. You can have a free session to experience it, find out what it's all about, get your questions answered. Go to Miracles Coaching. Dot com. One more thing. This show is young, but even though it's in its infancy, it's already skyrocketed. This show is now seen or heard on 1,000 different platforms across the galaxy. We're talking Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and probably any platform you could name. Zero Limits Living is there. Now, to make it easy for you to find all the episodes, I'm just putting them in one place. Go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com and binge. Bring your popcorn, sit on the sofa, watch all of the shows, and I'm posting them as we do them there. ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. And by now, you want me to shut up because you want to know, how do I win the lotto? How do I win sweepstakes? The person I have here is the author of several books, including one called How to Win Cash, Cars, Trips, and More. In fact, she calls herself the contest queen. How to Win Cash, Cars, Trips, and More. And she's helped people win about a million dollars in prizes so far. She also is a disciple and promoter of one of the greatest contest winners in history. Helene Hadsell had written a book called Contesting, the Name It and Claim It Game. This is one of the, the juiciest, most fun, most entertaining and educational and inspiring books I ever read in my life. And I was fortunate enough to, to interview the author, Helene Hadsell. She's gone now, but the person who brought the book back to print and wrote this book is my guest today. Carolyn, let me introduce you properly. Carolyn Willman is a digital marketer and author of two sweepstakes books. You can't win if you don't enter and how to win cash, cars, trips, and more. Today, people won more than $1 million using her proven online entry system. In 2008, Helene Hadsell asked Carolyn to carry on her legacy of teaching others her famous Select It, Project It, Collect It, Expect It manifestation system. After being out of print for 30 years, Helene's world-famous best-selling book, The Name It and Claim It Game, was updated and republished for a new generation to enjoy. And that means you. Carolyn now teaches others to win the sweepstakes of life. She's the contest queen. God, see how excited I get talking about this, and I'm so excited to see you. Carolyn, thank you for making time. 
Oh, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> this is, so, you know, I was rereading the book, The Name It and Claim It Game, and thank you for bringing it back to life for everybody and to uh, respect Helene and this whole message here. And I was just laughing. There's so many great stories. There's such humor. There's such insight. And you brought your own polish to it. So thank you for that. And of course, thank you for writing your other book, How to Win Cash, Cars, Trips, and More. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so good because I, Helene was almost like a grandma, probably to both <laughs> of us because of her age. Right. And we just loved her because she was had this air about her. She was just so calm and collected and she would just tell stories. And that's actually how she would uh, teach people about the law of attraction you're you are more straight up like here's the five steps and <laughs> right? she she would teach her steps but she would wrap them in a story and so you have to really read her stories carefully to to get those nuggets and i think there it, it, you got to remember she also wrote her first book uh, back in the 70s before you know that's 50 years ago before all the woo woo was really common right and so she needed right. to put, you know, she needed to wrap those store, uh, wrap her little gems and stories because that way people would um, absorb it at the time. And now um, it's fantastic because it's really widely accepted, especially from teachers like you. Right. How old was she when she passed? Do you remember? I think she was 86. Because I... I yeah. interviewed her. I knew she was in her early 80s. And you know the thing I remember the most? She flirted with me. <gasps> Here's this 80-year-old woman <laughs> flirting with me. In fact, I had to say, you know, this is a public call that people will be listening to later. <laughs> can, can we talk about that after the call? You know, and, and kind of politely and gentlemanly <laughs> put it aside. <laughs> so it was kind of, uh, you know, me tap dancing and being flattered at the same time that she did this. And for the people watching or listening, in case they don't know, Helene had so was the woman who, and correct me, Carolyn, um, she won every contest she ever entered. Is that correct? Yeah, she she was amazing when it came to that. And it's she her and I, she actually corrected me on this, but I had to make a conscious choice. The reason she was able to win every contest she ever entered is she would enter one contest yeah. for a specific prize that she focused on and she would put all her energy towards that one giveaway. Mm -hmm. I, however, she actually said to me, you split your energy. And I know she's right. But the way I like to enter sweepstakes is I enter, I like to enter a lot of different things. And to me, that's part of the fun and excitement as I sit down and I'll be like, Ooh, can I win this? Can I win that? I'm going to enter this one. I'm going to enter that one. And yes, I'm splitting my energy, but I personally like the Christmas aspect of the hobby mm. and the time I sit dreaming about all the different opportunities, which one is going to show up. And so I decided that even though I'm splitting my energy, I am going to keep doing my hobby the way I like it, because I teach people when you're having fun, that's when you're going to win. And the minute it feels like work, stop, because then it, there's no point in putting your energy in that direction. Yeah. And so even though I'm not taking Helene's advice from the <laughs> wisest woman in the world on how to win giveaways, um, I, I split my energy because I think that's fun. And I think that's okay because it's a conscious decision. Right. right. I think that's, that's the key because I still do win a, a fair bunch. I love doing little unboxings on TikTok and Instagram and all that. It's fun to see these like little things show up and sometimes fair size things show up. And I love doing that. Well, you know, I was rereading the book, The Name It and Claim It Game, as I was saying, and I read that passage where she won a house. And one of the things that made me laugh out, out loud is that she said she had everybody in the family involved. Not only did they believe it, but they acted as if it was already done, like they had already won. They actually went to one of the houses that they could win. It was a model house and they walked through it and everything so they could really feel it real. They can really touch it and get the sensory awareness. And what made me laugh out loud is that when they got the call, 
and the house rep was coming to their house to tell them they won, Helene told everybody in the family, act surprised. Act yeah. surprised. That she was so, amazing. It is amazing. She was so convinced. And it's one of my questions for you. And I feel like I have to back up a little bit. I'm so excited to talk to you. There's so many things you and I have in common besides her. And you've always been so generous sending me your books uh, to me and her books to me. You've always thought of me. And so I, I, I need to back up a little bit because I want to dive headfirst into how do we do this? And in fact, as you and I are doing this interview right now, it'll be over by the time this is posted, but it's still going to be relevant to talk about. The Mega Millions, I think it's the Mega Millions or the Powerball is at $1 billion dollars. It's a, it's over one billion dollars. For most of us, we can't even get our head there. It it boggles the mind. And I know when I interviewed Helene, I asked her, "How do we win the lottery?" And she said, "This goes back to what you were just talking about. Uh, don't split your energies by having more than one set of numbers." She said, have one set that you're playing and only play that set. So your energy is going on that. So I want to hear about winning the lottery, your input on it, uh, what you remember that she said. But I need to back up a little bit because I am sprinting. I'm so excited. I need to back up and ask you, how did you get started in this whole sweepstakes winning enterprise? How did you you're the contest queen now, but how did you get started in it in the early days? Well, I've always liked entering giveaways ever since I could remember when I was a kid. I remember standing, I'm going to date myself, uh, standing in the kitchen, calling into a radio station to win tickets on a rotary dial phone <laughs> and hoping I was caller four. You know, and I remember I was 18 and I didn't drive. Um, I had to have my mom go down to the radio station to pick up the tickets when I won. And then her and I would go to the show together thankfully my taste of music wasn't too eclectic so she she it did enjoy going to the concerts with me but I love doing it so I always knew you could win mm. and then one time um I won a trip back in 91 and I took my mom on this trip and I knew then that you could win bigger and then a few years elapsed and I found myself in the dot-com crunch I worked in tech in marketing. And of course, you know what happened when that dot com bubble burst? Right. I found myself unemployed and I read a Reader's Digest article of a couple who entered sweepstakes as a hobby to enhance their lifestyle. Because sadly, I have discovered you can't earn your living winning. <laughs> Believe me, if I had figured it out, I would have done it. Technically, even Helene didn't earn her living winning. She mm. worked for Jose Silva. She, her and her husband had investments. I mean, she earned her living and then she enhanced her lifestyle by winning prizes. So even Helene didn't earn her living winning. But um, I, I was in this dot-com crunch, unemployed, and this couple would enter sweepstakes as a hobby. And I thought, what a good idea. I'll just win stuff. <laughs> and right. then I proceeded to make every mistake under the book, which is why I'm so good at teaching it, because I know what not to do. And it wasn't until the prizes at first, you know, my, my, I call him my husband, he kind of poo pooed what I was doing. And that tends to happen with people. And then once the prizes start coming in, they become like, Hey, have you seen this one? Did you mm -hmm. enter that one? Are we in this one? <laughs> and that's when it, it, uh, it really becomes exciting for the whole family. My daughter doesn't know a life without winning. And once in a while, someone will show up in the mail and she said, oh, I, I saw a contest, I entered it myself. And I'm like, that's, a, that's my girl. <laughs> and at what point did you meet the, the superstar of contesting here, Helene herself, Helene Hadsell? Well, that was about six years after. So I ended up following a path that kind of led me to write my first book. And by then... If you are in the sweepstakes community in any fashion, you would have heard of Helene. It, she was mm. kind of, we had message boards back then, like group forums. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Internet 20 years ago. Right. And people <laughs> would talk about her book. And of course, I got myself a copy of it and read it and was enthralled. And then in 2008, before it was in vogue, I had a podcast and I invited her to be on. And she was a guest and oh, 
I was a terrible interviewer. If I could go back in time and fix that interview, I would do anything oh, wow. to do that. It was horrible. And there was no audio control. Like I'm loud and she's quiet. And because we're <laughs> phoning in on landlines, like there was no mics, there was no lights. There was no, there was nothing. It wasn't like today. And, uh, but I got to interview her and that's where, where off air, I was so cheeky. I said to her, I want to come visit you. And she says, no. And I'm like, all right, I, I took a shot because you can't win if you don't enter. Right. And three <laughs> days later, she phones me back and says, your spirit guides are so loud. You better come visit. So clearly I had help from the other side. And I think that was part of my destiny is I was to go and then pick up her gauntlet because, and it took me a while to realize that it was her original plan was to have her family continue her legacy. but everyone has their own path and none of her grandchildren were interested in continuing her work. And she was getting closer to the end of her life. And she knew that if I don't ha hand off this torch to somebody, all of this knowledge is going to die with me. So mm -hmm. I better, you know, get past the torch onto somebody. And I was the lucky recipient of that torch. And thank goodness you did say yes. And she said yes to you and you picked up the gauntlet there. I also know, because you also said it in the book, that when you met with her, both of you reached out to me to see if I can join in that meeting. And I, I never forgot it. I was so honored because it wasn't, I was in Texas and you guys were meeting in Texas and she lived in Texas. It, it could have happened. Uh, but of course it did. And I just interviewed her over the a more modern phone line when I did it. <laughs> so what did you learn specifically from sitting at her feet about contesting and winning? Well, first of all, her energy was off the charts. I had a headache by day four. Like I should just, <laughs> her energy was so powerful. I don't even know how to explain it. She just had this <laughs> way about her and she was, and she was so fun. Like she wanted me cause I had, I had rented a car cause Alvarado is, you know, a half hour drive from or 45 minute drive from, from the airport. So I'd rented a car and she was making blueprints at the time. So she had me on the, the next day drive to every dollar, dollar general and dollar, I don't know things, family dollar, whatever every dollar store in the vicinity looking for photo albums to make her blueprints. We had so much fun that day. And what was a real riot was we had gone into Rose's cafe for lunch. And of course, the first thing we see when we walk in is a sign for a sweepstakes, <laughs> but you had to film yourself and send it in. And she didn't have any technology. I had a flip phone with the worst camera. I mean, this is, you know, um, 2008. But I managed to film her on this flip phone and send in this entry on her behalf. And she won second prize. Really? <laughs> like, she was still this? winning even then. Yeah, I think it was luggage and she gave it to her son. I, I had read in the book that, or maybe it was in your book, that she had stopped entering contests because she felt like she had won everything that she had ever wanted. Is, is yeah. that true? Yeah. And, and just like anything in life, you know, we all go through phases and she had won everything she wanted and the, she didn't feel a need to, to keep entering for the sake of entering. Mm. And, and I uh, kind of agree with that philosophy. Um, you know, if you've already won everything you want, I mean, she won a fully furnished home. Yeah. I went in front and filmed it. And it was funny because in her books, she talks about this house being in the middle of nowhere. Like it was the third house built in the development. It was nothing around but farm fields. And when I went just to see what the house was like, when I was down in, in Texas, it was in the middle of everything. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this used to be out in the country. Whoa, <laughs> talk about development. This is in the middle of the city now. Wow.
So what I'm curious about, and, and I'll just back up for one second here. I, I had mentioned in the introduction about people wanting to win the lottery. It's probably the number one question I get when people find out I was in the secret or I know about the law of attraction or they know any of my books. I've been on planes when they recognize me and they'll just turn and say, how do I win the lottery? It's the number one thing on their mind. And I can understand it because it's to get rich quick. They want to just do it instantly. If there's real magic in the world, let's use it for the lotto. What is your take on winning the lottery? I think I read somewhere in, in your book uh, your opinion about it, but I want to hear it firsthand from you. Well, first, don't just want to win the lottery because if you go my ticket and you win a, a $2 replay, uh, you won the lottery. Right. You, you, <laughs> you need to be more specific. Do you want the grand prize jackpot? Or do you just want to win the lottery? Because if you say, I want to win the lottery, and then you win 10 bucks, you've won the lottery. So you have to be really specific in what you're asking for. But more importantly, why do you want the money? Yeah. What do you really want? Because if what you want is, you know, um, being able to, quit your job and stay home with your kids and focus on what can I do in my life to get me to that state without having to win the lottery? Or I want to start my own business. How can I do that on a shoestring? How do I want, you know, pick whatever it is you want and see how you can do it without winning the lottery. Oh, that is really, so. You don't want the money. You want the next thing. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. That is really my answer to those airplane people and anybody else who stops me, as I will say, basically, what do you want the money for? And when they can tell me, because at first they're going to say they're going to pay off their bills. Well, everybody wants to live, live a stress-free life. Great. Uh, then they're going to say they're going to go on trips. They're going to buy shoes. They're going to buy cars. Okay, all great. But when you're done going on your spending spree and you wake up on the beach one morning with your shoes and your handbags and your cars and everything else, what are you going to do with your life? What is it that you really want to do? And you're thinking the money is going to enable you to do it. Because in my experience, I have found that you don't really need money. You, you need it for a certain level of survival. But what you need more right. than money is creativity. And with creativity, you can get a whole lot of the things that you think you need to win the lotto to get. So would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> now, as I say it, I also wonder, am I just kind of sidestepping the whole issue of creating your own reality and the message of the secret and using the law of attraction? Because basically anybody who's into that in an almost fanatic way feels like, hey, if I name it, why can't I claim it? The lottery right now is $1 billion. I want to win it. $1 billion. Who cares why I want it? I'll use it for a good cause. I'll give away a whole bunch of money. I'll send some to Lux Media Studios because they're putting on this show around the galaxy. So I'll use it for good, good purposes. But will I win? Isn't everybody else that watched The Secret and reading The Law of Attraction or reading my books or watching this show, aren't they buying tickets too? How do we edge out so that we can actually get the results we want? Well, I, I think most people that um, take action, they don't, if they, you looked at their subconscious, they don't actually believe they're going to win. Yeah. They, they don't believe they're going to win. That's they have good. to live. You even talk about this. I've seen some of your videos and yeah. I'm so happy you talk about Neville Goddard. Oh, um, yes. Goddard. Am I pronouncing yes. it incorrectly? Um, he lived in the end result. And so most people, first of all, I can't even fathom a billion dollars. I mean, I think I could do a million, but I can't fathom a billion. Right. You know, it's where's your comfort zone and, and mm -hmm. how high can you get? I don't know if most people can do a billion. Mm -hmm. And also it's who's Helena always said, whoever's putting the most energy towards it will, will win it. Mm. I'm waiting on a, even right now, I'm waiting on a tech repair person to call me. And the woman who had called to say he would be late uh, told me all the information. And she said, can I help you with anything else? And I said, yeah, do you know the numbers that are going to come out for, for the Powerball for a million, for a billion dollars? And she said, she said, I have no idea what I would do with that kind of money. 
That's what she said. I think most people have no idea what they would do with more money. I've often said that we need to grow in to having more, and we usually grow slowly. Like I had been homeless, and I grew a little bit, went into poverty, grew a little bit, started to make a name for myself, grew a little bit, and you know, I'm still expanding even today. But I don't have a billion dollars, not right now. I would have to expand even to that. So how do we how do we up our prosperity set point? How do we get to the point where we feel like we deserve to win a big sweepstakes, whether it's the lottery or it's a car? Well, I tell people the small ones keep you going in between the biggies. Mm. Because most of the time when people are entering sweepstakes as a hobby, you're going to win a lot more smaller prizes in between, say, a car or a trip or you know, a kitchen full of appliances or something. And so you get your feet wet winning all the little ones. And then when the big one comes in, you're, you're already comfortable. You're in that expectation of winning. You're comfortable winning. You're comfortable reading the Mm -hmm. rules. You're comfortable Mm -hmm. seeing the congratulations. And, and once you kind of get into that speed, I mean, I have stories of people that have won a car on their first sweepstakes. So it nice. is possible to just, you know, just win, just win come, you know, come out running. Well, um, where would you say somebody should start? I'm, I'm trying to act as an agent for the people that are listening or watching and they're thinking, okay, I, I'm not ready to win a billion dollar lottery ticket, but what about a car, maybe groceries or and up you mentioned an appliance maybe somebody needs a refrigerator where would they what would be a good place to start how do you advise them you're the contest queen you're the expert here you're the disciple of helene how would you how would you help us begin okay the first thing i tell people to do is create an email address just for entering sweepstakes mm. and keep it simple because marketers like ourselves are going to have to be going through the thought and and emailing winners and things. So you want something simple that you can remember that you can type. That's easy for other people to type. So have an email. I use Yahoo. A lot of people like Gmail, you know, they're free. You can access them from anywhere. Set up one just for entering sweepstakes. It really makes it easy and keeps your, uh, say work. This is how I learned. I use my work email to start. Yeah. I don't recommend that. (laughs) <laughs> um, it keeps your <laughs> right. it keeps your life separate. Like I said, this is how I learned. I made all the mistakes so you don't have to. So it keeps everything separate. The next thing you do is there's people who have made the hobby easy. I, there's sweepstakes aggregates because an aggregate aggregates all of the giveaways in one place. It makes it so easy. Uh, they vet them in advance. Then so you'll know they're legitimate and they put them on there. I have a whole list on my website and they're all different formats. Some are newsletters, some are forum type uh, platforms, some are blog style. I tell people poke around and find the style you like, because when you're having fun, that's when you're going to win. And so it makes it easy. And then the next thing you should do just to confer is to read the rules. It's the number one thing people do wrong because I also run giveaways for companies and I see the entrants making mistakes over and over and over again. And they're not in to win if they do that. They're they're wasting their time. They're wasting the sponsor's time. Please read the rules so that you know that you're eligible to win. Uh, This is all great. And is your website contestqueen.com or is there another one? No, that's it. Of course, it's the contestqueen.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our website's contestqueen.com. Now, in Helene's book, there, well, first of all, I want to read something that I found in the book. And thank you again for reprinting it. It's just a positive thinking message that she has. Uh, begin to act as if you expect success, happiness, and abundance. Prepare for your good. Nothing is too good to be true. Nothing is too wonderful to happen. Nothing is too good to last when you have a positive attitude for your good. I love that passage because this is the aura in her book, in her message, and I think that was in her life. 
Is this part of what we need in order to win a contest? Do we need to not only go and fill out the form and read the rules and have our email address and submit whatever they ask to submit, but we also need to have a mindset of expectancy yes. of success? Yes. Yeah, so I tell people, and I learned this from you. First, first of all, I, I, I have my copy of The Attractor Factor, and uh, I love it. And I found Helene's oh. copy, too. So I have both, and they're my precious uh, copies. Wow. But you have to you have to do what you teach. Is you have to expect it. So I tell people uh, my little mantra, not as elegant as Helene, but I tell people chant to themselves like I am lucky. I'm a winner. I'm a grand prize magnet. Mm. Because when you're feeling like you're going to win, you you win and you expect to win. Now, unlike Helene, because I choose to split my energy, I do not win every contest I enter, but I win more than most people. So my statistics are higher. I've actually done the math. I win about 1% of what I enter. So I really split my energy, but I have a lot of fun doing it. So I think that's okay. <laughs> well, you know, the thing that I've noticed about you, several times in our conversation so far, you have used the word fun. You said it in the beginning and you said it a couple of times during it and you just said it now. And what I'm picking up is there is an energy in fun that is positive, that is high, it's a high vibe, and it is um, magnetic. So I, and this is me projecting a, an interpretation to why you're saying fun. My guess is this is where we get the, the positive vibe that from a law of attraction standpoint goes out and brings it back to us. If we're having fun trying to win the car or the refrigerator or a bag of groceries or whatever, we've upped the odds, at least in my opinion. Would you agree to that? Or is there a different definition for using the word fun? I agree. And actually, Helene, if you read her book, she her whole family had fun doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like if you read what she read, like she was a bit crazy too, like me. Um, she, when she went to look at the house, to, because you had to go in those days, it was a, the hobby was a little bit different. Now it's all online. Yeah. Uh, but in those days, for that particular uh, giveaway, you had to go to the house and tour it and fill out an entry form and, you know, whatnot. And so she wanted to go to this house and she called up all the people that she knew in her contest club. And they're like, Oh, it's raining. I don't want my hair to get wet. And she's like, I'll treat you to lunch. And they're like, no, it's okay. Every single person she called that day turned her down. And she was like, I don't care. I'm going to go win myself a house. And off she went. And it was, I think 20 miles, which to me doesn't seem very far. Cause I drove to Texas <laughs> right? recently to get um, the balance of her business materials to help ensure that her legacy continues as wow. you know, what she had asked me to do. So to me, 20 miles <laughs> doesn't seem that much, but I guess to her in those days, that was really far. And so she drove on a rainy day to go win a house and she didn't care. She's like, I'm having fun. I'm going to win my house. I'm going. And she didn't let anything deter her. Even the fact that no one else wanted to go with her. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it's when, amazing. When you enter a contest, do you have that level of belief of confidence? I, I feel when I read her book that she has this level of inner conviction that can't be dampened. She is just like convinced this is happening. I'm winning the house. I'm winning whatever. And you can't talk me out of it. I mean, she's there. Do you have that when you're entering all these different contests? Do you really feel like, yep, I got it. Uh, sometimes yes. And sometimes no. And what's really interesting is I sometimes will use contests to lift me up. So if I'm having a bit of a miserable day, because we're messy humans, you know, mm -hmm. welcome to the party. Right. And <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll I'll make myself a cup of tea and I'll sit down and I'll start entering because I'm feeling not great. And the act of doing that and oh, look, I can win that. Oh, oh, that's a fun one. And by the time I finish an hour or two later, depending on how much time I want to expend on it. I feel 110% better and I'm feeling great. So sometimes I use sweepstakes. So I'm entering and I don't know if entering at that low level is great, but I know by the time I finish, it's pulled me up. 
the, mm. you know, the emotional scale. Yeah. And so that's, it's not necessarily, you don't always have to feel great when you're entering because sometimes you can use it as a tool to pick yourself up. At least it does for me. Well, and then other awesome. days I'm feeling like I am feeling lucky. <laughs> like, like I had, I know how the energy works because when you're vibing in that spot, nothing can stop you. Mm. I went for the first time in seven years to the annual national sweepstakes convention. Yes, there is a national convention <laughs> for people that like to win sweepstakes. And I have made friends for life from this hobby. And that's kind of crazy because I always thought the best thing I would ever get out of entering a sweepstakes would be, you know, a car or a trip or something. Mm. But friends are actually the best thing that have come out of this hobby. And I was so happy to be there. I was hugging everybody. I was just, I felt like I was on cloud nine. You couldn't pull me down if you tried. And for I won five prizes that day. I have never won five prizes. I only won one of them at the convention. The rest were from all my regular entries. And I just got, I had two, three instant wins and, a, and I won a trip. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is amazing. So I really believe it's because I've been around all that energy yeah. of my friends. Yes. And it's kind of <clears throat> odd to think. You're like, but these people are entering the same sweepstakes. They're all competing against you. <laughs> True. But there's enough prizes for everybody. And the fun and the energy, I would happily take that over any prize. Like, I can't even explain how amazing i felt being around these mm -hmm. super positive people that's the other mm -hmm. thing i love about the sweepstakers is we're so pot like the whole like 500 people in a room and everybody's positive like the energy was fantastic you can't bottle that stuff if i could i'd make a fortune <laughs> i know what, what you're describing though is one of the reasons that you would be winning because you're in this vortex of high positive energy that is actually focusing on winning one of the questions that's in the back of the book of helene's book uh, is about is it selfish to be focused on this and she's like well you can look at it as selfish but she doesn't think of it as selfish unless somebody is winning just to hoard so if they're winning and they don't want anybody else to win and they're winning just to fill their garage with appliances and whatever else they're winning, then she would consider it to be selfish because what you're describing is that there is a cooperation. Everybody wants to win, but they don't need to win the very same thing that they're all glad for each other to win. And I think that's part of the elevation of emotion, but it also raises the question, what about the naysayers? What if somebody watching or listening says, okay, I've been watching Carolyn. I'm going to go get her book and name it and claim it, how to win cash, uh, cars, trips. And then they tell their husband or they tell their kids or they tell somebody at work. And suddenly you can see it, dark clouds form and raining on the parade. What's your advice for the people that are around us when we want to win? Well, I, first of all, I call it the good crazies. So you just have to stay in your own crazy and not worry about what other people think. Because when I started dating George and I would uh, be entering all these giveaways after a while, he, he's like, you know, we really should be focusing on work. And I said, well, you know, I, I need to have some personal time. I could spend it watching a movie or TV, or I can spend my hour uh, entering sweepstakes. And so I'm going to choose it to enter sweepstakes. And then I won a trip for 40 Universal Studios in Florida. And then after that, it was like, oh, are, are we in that? Are we, this, the naysayers become your biggest cheerleaders. And um, they just, he just shakes his head at me when I win stuff. He's just like, I can't believe she's doing that. So he doesn't stop, he doesn't help me, but he doesn't poo poo me anymore either. And even at the sweepstakes convention, I've seen naysayers, shockingly enough, I remember being at a table, the, the banquet dinner one year, and these two women were kind of grouchy. They just sat there like, yeah, we never really win anything. And I just kind of looked at them and I thought, nope, you're not. <laughs> and Helene even has a story of, of somebody, a neighbor that tried and she mailed all her letters off. She goes, there goes nothing. And Helene's thinking, yep, there goes nothing. Because you, you have to think. So I tell people, if you're a little unsure, if you're mailing some entries in or you're clicking on a lot of them to enter online, 
don't think, you know, this is for not think wonder which one of these is yeah. going to be the winner. This is exciting because I'm entering all of these and I'm going to win one of them. And I just don't know which one it is. And how fun is that? And so that's the way I tell people to start getting a little, you know, kind of get their feet wet in the hobby um, and not get discouraged. And then I love this, is my favorite thing. The emails from people say, oh my gosh, I won my first prize. And they are so excited. Even if it's a small one, like a $25 gift card to a local restaurant or something, mm -hmm. they are so excited. And I'm like, yep, contest crack. One win and you're hooked. That's it. <laughs> Done. They're, a, they're a sweepstaker for life. Right. And it's because it's fun. Who doesn't like um, taking their family out to dinner and it doesn't cost anything or getting yeah. your kids involved and they win a bicycle for the summer or just, you know, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. No, this is so beautiful. Oh, I love your energy. I love what you're doing. I love your work. I love your books. We're going to be running out of time. So this is where I get a little hyper because I'm trying to squeeze in what I can and ask some rapid fire questions. And one of them is this show is called Zero Limits Living. And I like to ask the question, do we have any limits? What's your opinion? Do we have any limits in life? Well, I think, you know, I can't be a basketball player. Cause I'm not tall enough and I'm 55. So I'm going to say, yeah, we do have some, <laughs> Okay. But, but right. So that's a limit, but to me, anything that you can create with your mind is limitless because mm. that has no barriers. Mm. So writing a book, painting, singing, drawing, I mean, anything that you can create that's limitless. Absolutely. There's limitlessness. And when it comes to winning anything, whether it's cash, cars, trips, and more, as your one book says, with a lotto or anything or a house, um, do we have any limits? Only to what you believe. And I think that's the secret. You know, mm. you, you should, you know, I'll tell people, go back and reread the attractor factor. Sometimes, you know, what's interesting and I found this doing reading, rereading Helene's book as I was editing and writing it. You will see new things. So if you yeah. haven't read Joe's book in a while, go back and reread it because the person you are today isn't the person that first read it. Mm. So you will glean new insights from his book. And then you can use those and combine. That's the beauty of the hobby of sweepstaking, mm -hmm. we can take the attractor factor and how to win cash cards, trips and more and do this because one supports the other. My book is how to do it, but your book is how to get yourself into the state to win. Yes. Yes. Well said. Well said. Um, I have a curious question here. You can see by my background, which is not a green screen. Those are real books back there that I'm a book collector. I'm a book addict. And you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the secrets. I'm looking for the secrets of zero limits living. I'm looking for the secrets of manifestation. I'm looking for the lost secrets. And I can't help but wonder, since you've inherited the legacy of the, the woman who won every sweepstakes she ever entered, and she was a disciple and ally with Jose Silva of the Silva Mind Control, and she knew Joseph Murphy and a bunch of other people. What did she have in her back pocket that maybe you've discovered that she never released? Did she um, have? I don't a... know yet because okay. one of the things I did when I went down to Texas was um, I got a lot of her books. I couldn't bring everything back. I only had a car. Um, so I brought back as much as I could, but I found a lot of floppy disks and some printed papers. Hmm. I think I might have found enough material to write another book, <laughs> but I don't know yet because I have to go and buy a th three and a quarter inch floppy disk reader. Right. <laughs> to see what I've got. I don't, I don't know yet, but my gut is telling me there's one more book um, out there. And uh, we'll see. But her philosophies, I don't think you're going to be, you know, I don't want to say I want to say in a way you're not going to read anything new because she was who she was. And that's the same in all of her current books. Mm -hmm. So you're going to read new stories, new adventures, new ideas. Mm -hmm. But her essence is already out there. That's like I can feel her. I just love her. Yeah. 
if you had to recap what her teaching and your teaching combined happens to be, what would you say it is and a mouthful or a sentence or a couple steps? I, th I think that quote that you read pretty much sums it up. You have to be of the mindset that you are a winner mm -hmm. in advance and that this life is magical and mm -hmm. that anything can happen because you don't know who's going to call you tomorrow, who you're going to bump mm -hmm. into on the street, what letter's going to show up. And so just be open to all that life has that's unexpected. Sometimes I'll even say in the morning to my guys, hey, do something fun today. Show me something some unexpected. And sure enough, something fun and unexpected will always <laughs> happen. I love it. Well, you, you mentioned talking to your guides and you had said earlier that Helene had said your guides were so loud and insistent that she agreed for you to come on over and visit her. Um, how do you talk to your guides? I, I've had conversations with a couple other guests where we talked about our guides and I've openly said, I got guardian angels. I talk to them. I give them assignments. They used to sit around drinking beer, but now I tell them there's certain things I want done and I'll make requests. How do you talk to your guides? I talk to them like I'm talking to you. I just right. sit and I just talk to them. And sometimes if I'm not in a good mood or something, or having a bad day, I'm like, Hey guys, you got to do something here. Or, um, you know, get, show me some grace today. Or, you know, I, and I do the same thing. I give them assignments. Like I said, Hey, today I want something fun and unexpected. Nice. And sure enough, something fun and unexpected. I think they like that one. Cause that's who I am. <laughs> it's for a sign to the, <laughs> to the one that's loud. I, that's what I thought when she said my guides are loud. I thought, well, of course my guides are loud. I'm loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want people to go get the books, but I'm also wondering, is there another book? I'm a book guy, right? I need to know, is there another book that's along the same lines of winning, winning in life, winning contest? Obviously, Carolyn Willman, How to Win Cash, Cars, Trips, and More. I want people to go get that book. Then you brought to life Helene Hadsell's book, contesting the name it and claim it game and of course self-serving as it is you mentioned it and so did i the attractor factor does another book come to mind that maybe is kind of a niche oriented book about winning controlling reality manifesting your desires oh there's so many i actually yeah. put a list on my website of all the okay. ones that can attract luck but i've put if somebody wants another book on how to win uh, my sweeping, I call her my sweeping soul sister. Her name's Di Coke and she's in the UK and she wrote a book called Super Lucky. So actually one of the things on my vision board is to get to the UK and hang out with her. Nice. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Right. That's right. what I mean. Life is magical. Who says I can't <laughs> go to the UK and hang out with her? That's exactly right. Well, that's going to happen. I already see it. And you're already telling me about it. It's already a done deal. And her book is called what? Super Lucky? Yeah, Super Lucky. And how clever. Her website, superlucky.me. And <laughs> oh, I know, oh, really. And I know the marketer in me. Just, I love me too. her. So, me too. Super right? Lucky. And so it's, she's got another resource for winning, especially because your uh, website is so global. Um, she focuses mainly on the UK and Europe. So for any of your listeners over there, they want to, they want to connect with her too. All right. Well, in the last couple of minutes, first of all, is there a question you wanted me to ask or you feared that I was going to ask? Here's your chance to bring it up. Oh, one thing I get a lot is, have you won a house yet? And I said, no. <laughs> Did you try? Did you oh, want I'm to? Oh, I'm trying. I'm working on it. I also think there's divine. I think the one thing nobody talks about is divine yeah. timing. Oh, good. Yeah. And what I about believe, divine timing? I believe that I will win one. I just don't know when because yeah. it has to fit into uh, my life path properly, or I think it can screw it up. Because mm -hmm. how many? Mm -hmm. The stat is 73% of lottery winners lose their winnings in the first five years because it's it's not the best time for them to win. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people want instantaneous win the lotto, give me the house, give me the whatever. And I've also learned that there is divine timing. If I put a seed in your hand and said, turn it into a tree, you'd have to go put it in the ground and water it and make sure it got light. And over time, if you took care of it, you'll get a tree, but you won't get it just like that. 
And so, and what is the the last words? Do you what what are your last words for my audience? What do you want them to do? Think about what's a takeaway. Uh, back to my favorite mantra, and it can go for life or it can go for sweepstakes. It's I'm lucky. I'm a winner. I'm a grand prize magnet. But then you can replace the words grand prize magnet with any kind of magnet. So, you know, I'm a love magnet. Never You make friends and all your friends and family and coworkers uh, and acquaintances just love you. You can replace the word with anything. But if you believe it in advance, it'll happen. But you have to believe it before. Helene even said, you have to believe it before you see it hmm. for it to manifest. And people get it the other way around. So that's that's the advice. That is great advice. I can't thank you enough, Carolyn. Thank you for making time. You are a fireball. I look forward to hanging out with you or doing part two of this or the book that you end up writing with the super lucky dot me person or bringing to life something else that Helene left behind. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much. I love sharing my uh, fireball energy with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. You and your guides light up the room. Everybody, I've been talking to Carolyn Wilman. She wrote How to Win Cash, Cars, Trips, and More on Amazon. Go get it. She brought to life, uh, back to life, a book that was out of print for decades, contesting the name it and claim it game. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. This is Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. This show is now being seen or heard on 1,000 different platforms, from Roku to Apple to Amazon, anything you could probably name. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, and you can see all the episodes there. Also, claim your 45-minute free consultation. Check out my Miracles Coaching Program. It's been around for two decades. It's already trademarked. It's already proven. It's a system that works. Go to MiraclesCoaching.com. Fill out the form, expect miracles. I want to thank Lux Media Studios for putting on this event, Candace Barr for supporting me and this, Nick for running the camera, making us all look and sound good today, and you for watching. Go tell your friends, tell them all that there's a movement, there's an awakening, there's light happening here at Zero Limits Living. Godspeed, expect miracles. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.